doing well so today I wanted to talk to you about um, the difference between a ground cherry and a Cape gooseberry so the the Peruviana is the Cape gooseberry the Peru the Peru Inosa is the ground cherry and the Tomatillo is the Exo Capa um, so when we were first um, growing the gooseberries these are the gooseberry field back here when we first started growing the gooseberries we were novices and we just did a trial luckily for us we did get um, Fisalis Peruviana in our first batch of seeds unfortunately the second batch of seeds that we got from the exact same place which is also a bit of a note for new farmers that reputable supplies of seeds is a bit of a must even though well this is actually now the second mistake we have in packaging but the truth is unless you search unless you search specifically for the cultivars then you can make the mistake because cape gooseberry is almost like a blanket statement used for um this Fisalis um, fruit cultivar so I really really wanted to make this video because as I said to you we bought a batch of seeds from the same company that we bought the Cape Gooseberries from and unfortunately they turned out to be ground cherries unfortunately because as farmers we want to plant what we intend to plant we don't want to plant things that are kind of like it or just like it because obviously we don't know what the market we know our market for what we want to obviously grow so it becomes quite dangerous and costly for us um we are in a in a situation where we this is our first gonna be our first harvest with these so we're gonna test the market with the ground cherries but actually seeing them in the shops now so I've, we're starting to actually see the trend of them growing um, in south african shops and when i actually bought these samples to taste there was one batch that I bought from a cut from a supermarket and these batch tasted completely different and I did wonder like were they off were they different what was the matter with them they didn't taste bad but they just taste completely different to the Cape gooseberries that I know they look like the gooseberry a little bit more translucent but they look like it and I honestly didn't think or know that there were specific types I just thought that there were specific names so what, what I found when I first researched them was that all of these names from hush cherry to ground cherry to Cape gooseberry and I just thought that these names represented the different cultures across the planet naming them what they wanted to name them that was not the case <laughs> they're actually different cultivars completely and but they are the same fruit so in one way we we we're in a 50 50 situation with this now guys because we have a field of cape gooseberries so these are the cape gooseberries and you can see where the guys are weeding now that's where the ground cherries are so i'll show you guys the first you know harvest as i said to you um before in the beginning of the season that i was planning to get pallets sent to joburg so what I will say is that seeing the fact that ground cherries are still sold as gooseberries in the supermarkets makes me feel more at ease that the market will understand what this is, won't be too shocked by the taste difference, will still enjoy it. As I said, the, the ground cherry isn't particularly different. I mean, actually, no, it doesn't look different. It looks pretty similar, slightly different shaped husk. It tastes very different though. It does actually taste very different. So we're in a 50-50 about whether the market will accept and like the ground cherry versus the authentic Cape gooseberry, which is way more of a tart and citrus flavor. Um, the ground cherry we found is very, very sweet. Um, so yeah, guys, what I'm gonna do today is so that for you guys, you guys can in the future um, determine, you know, if you buy a pack of seeds and it says gooseberries, Cape gooseberries, and it turns out to be something that you didn't really expect, then this may be why you may actually have ground cherries and not Cape gooseberries. So I'm gonna go through the differences between the cultivars today, um, just to kind of get put more information, because even to the fact that I haven't been able to find a lot of information unless I specifically ask unless I use the unless I use the Latin names and specifically ask for the differences between these two cultivars I'm not going to find the information so yeah guys this is the difference between a Cape gooseberry and a ground cherry okay so this is the first example this is a true Cape gooseberry plant 
Um, the first distinct difference is the fact that it grows tall for up from the ground and it forms a really nice um, domed bush. As you can see the ones next to it, they, fly, they grow upwards. Um, they can grow very tall, I'll show you the older ones as a comparison that they can grow tall. This is probably about a metre tall and they can grow to be, I think, maybe even two metres tall. The fruit grows along the vines and the vines grow up and out. So they don't grow onto the floor, they grow up and out and then when they are dried, they will fall to the ground themselves. Um, the flowers This is so the flowers are yellow and black and when they bud and here's the flower it becomes nice and it's, it's very pretty yellow and black and then the flower will go into forming the fruit which starts off as a very as a black green and then it will gradually turn lighter until it's completely white. And here guys is the ground cherry plant. So as you can see, distinctly different. So when this uh, first started growing, we were very surprised and worried that there was something wrong with the Cape gooseberries and that perhaps they had stunted growth because of they were planted too late. Or even though um, the Cape gooseberries that were its planting partners, um, the ones that actually were Cape gooseberries, they were doing what they normally do, which was go up. Let me put my foot here just for comparison, so you can see how big it is, because you can't really tell otherwise. Um, they grow flat, very flat. Like literally, this is my hand. Um, from what I've read, they can grow um, about two meters, I think. And I think two meters wide and about 500 centimeters tall. So they are destined to pretty much stay a very flat plant. Now, doing my research on this actual plant, they do say, obviously, because you can see how much ground cover is taking up and will take up as they grow, this ridge will pretty much be full. So once they're established, they will make an excellent ground cover plants and they will prevent a lot of weeds from reoccurring. Unfortunately, we um, had neglected the area a bit too much because we had a lot of more work to do. And we then came back to find lots and lots and lots and lots of weeds. And so we're clearing the weeds now. And I'll show you some other plants just to show you how prolific they are because I do notice that these plants are actually younger than those Cape gooseberries. Now, these ground cherries are younger, but at this young stage, they are extremely prolific. So really to see, in order to harvest the plant, you want to lift it. You lift these flaps, and these are like vines that you literally lift, and you see the peekaboo fruit underneath. But you can also see just how much fruit is on so you can see just how much fruit is actually on these plants there is a lot of fruit on them when we first started growing these plants we did notice how small i mean they started fruiting at a very very early age and we were i was quite worried we were all quite worried that obviously as i said there was something wrong and when i say small maybe this plant if you can see how tiny so as prolific as they are they can be very small so in the beginning i was quite worried but however i noticed as the plant got bigger the fruit actually gets bigger and i actually think it's exponential growth as the as literally the vines of the plant gets bigger it will produce bigger fruit so if I say if you do grow ground cherries don't be worried about the size of the fruit in the early stages because the fruit will grow bigger as the plant does grow bigger so you see the difference between the leaves the, the Cape gooseberry definitely has a sharper 
much generally sharper tip um, the, the ground cherry seems to be a bit wider of, of, a, of a leaf they're very similar it's very slight differences but I do feel like the ground cherry is a bit of a fatter less tapered tip so I feel like it's a less tapered tip I feel like they're slightly broader broader leaf I the one thing I will say with the ground cherries is that they the the pool of um, fruit that is actually ripe it's actually a bit neater the Cape gooseberry because it's a taller plant the fruit tends to kind of drop any which way the wind blows but for the ground cherries because they're so flat to the ground they're pretty much going to stay where they are and so as an option for growth for actually choosing the, the ground cherry I do see a lot of positives um, and you know I feel like growing in the early stages what I would definitely say is keep the place weeded completely weeded and allow the ground cherry to be, become the dominant plant of the ridge um, and then once it does become the dominant plant it's pretty much going to take over the ridge and become really good ground cover um, also the good point about it is that it is very prolific way more prolific than the Cape Gooseberry plant early stages because I will, think, I will say about the Cape Gooseberry is that when it's um, mature the, the plant is mature and it's um, peak season it produces a lot of fruit and a lot bigger fruit and for me honestly a lot more tasty fruit 